Hello everyone. Uh, this video is going to be partly a response to Rocky Mr. E's video uh, titled Rise of Totalitarianism, specifically the part where he addresses the artificial womb. And it's also going to give my own personal reasons for being a proponent to this technology. Now in watching the video, one of the first comparisons I've seen Rocky Mr. E make is that the artificial womb is the riskiest technological endeavor for men since the splitting of the atom. Uh, which of course gave us the nuclear bomb. Now when making this comparison, Rocky Mystery, you fail to point out that the nature of these two technologies, uh, the splitting of the atom and the artificial womb, are both destructive and constructive respectively. Uh, while the nuclear age has admittedly provided us with a relatively safe, high yield renewable energy source, we cannot ignore that within it are the potential seeds of humanity's destruction in no uncertain terms. The detonation of enough nuclear bombs on planet Earth will bring about the extinction of the human race to a 100% certainty. The same cannot be said about the artificial womb, since the very act of using this technology will by definition result in the creation of more human life. Whether or not this state abuses such a technology is an uncertainty, but the very act of artificial breeding will have to, by definition, add to the human population. Now, you were quoted, uh, Rock and Mystery, as saying, Quote, I am against any process which breeds human life. Such an endeavor is too risky and could result in a whole swath of nightmaric scenarios. End quote. Now I'm going to go ahead and assume that you meant to say any process that artificially breeds human life. The problem with that argument is that any human being grown in an artificial womb would still in fact be 65% oxygen, 19% carbon, 10% hydrogen, all the way down to the trace elements that make up the human body. So as far as the matter that comprises his or her body and organs, they would be 100% human being exactly like you. Now, even taking into account the possibility of some transcendental qualities that comprise a human soul, I fail to see how this quality would be conferred or not conferred onto such a human being by virtue of whether or not he or she developed in the mother's womb. Either way, uh, something like this cannot be proved, and so we have to rely solely on the scientific definition of what it means to be human anyway. So just like an endangered species is still a genetically accurate member of its species, whether it was birthed naturally, or whether efforts to preserve it brought it forth by implanting an already fertilized embryo in a closely related female surrogate of another species, by all accounts, a human allowed to gestate in an artificial womb will be no less human than you. Considering that you've referred to artificial reproduction as an abomination, uh, I want to know what scientific method was used to come to this conclusion. What scientific proof do you have to show that a human gestated in such a way has some lesser personhood as evidenced by you calling them abominations? Now again, you say that you're against any process which breeds human life artificially. Are you against neonatal intensive care units? I mean, we have infants being born as early as five months. No newborn infant could possibly survive being birthed into the world at that stage of development, so we use technology to furnish them with what can only be described as a primitive form of artificial womb technology where the baby is allowed to continue gestating in an environment that sufficiently simulates the mother's womb to a degree that the baby can grow up to live a normal, healthy life. Again, these infants would undoubtedly die without an artificial, highly monitored environment made possible by science, and is this also an abomination? How is the science of neonatology not the precursor to the development of an artificial womb? Is neonatology an abomination as well, rocking mystery? You see, this is the kind of dogmatic foolishness that has held back scientific endeavor since the dawn of civilization. That because rocking mystery read a book that warns about the possible dangers of such a technology that doesn't even exist yet, that we should avoid developing it in hopes of, quote, respecting the natural order of procreation, end quote. You know, I'm reminded of the Inquisition calling Galileo a heretic to uphold a religious order, a natural religious order, instead of providing merits as to why he was wrong about the earth rotating about the sun. Now, I have nothing against religion, and I believe it will be with humanity forever in one form or another, but with that said, but with that said, advocating about the abandonment of the pursuit of a technology based on the warnings of a dystopian novel of fiction written in what will probably end up being a century before the technology is even developed is profoundly illogical to say the least. Uh, again, and I'm going to read the full quote this time, uh, Rocking Mystery has said, 
artificial reproduction has opened the floodgates wide open for ideologues who have no respect for the natural order of procreation. It is best left alone, since as long as it's available, groups will want to co-opt it, end quote. Now, are you against, Rocking Mystery, are you against prophylactics or genetics? I mean, should we have never sequenced and tinkered with the human genome since the state could employ this technology with an endless amount of nefarious applications as well? This statement that you've made leads you to an inevitable conundrum, since stating that artificial reproduction upsets the natural order of procreation by creating life outside of the womb. You must then also concede that abortion, according to your standards, upsets the same natural order by stopping procreation from occurring within the womb. And so surely the removal of an intact fertilized zygote for delivery to an artificial womb is no less invasive than the abortion of that same fertilized egg. And so a woman would no longer have the ability to say that her body and person are being infringed on, and the fertilized egg would be allowed to live. Thus, in restricting the artificial womb, you allow continued abortion, which is undoubtedly a disruption of this natural order of procreation, as you call it, with, of course, the added consequence of an abortion of an incipient human being, as opposed to the other so-called disruption of the order, where the woman isn't required to carry the child to term, and it still lives. So tell me, Rocking Mystery, which one of these breaches of the natural order are you willing to tolerate? And whichever choice you make, are you not then disrupting this order yourself? You see, this is how poorly you've thought out your argument. The argument itself is an exercise in paradox. Calling it the natural order of procreation implies that you believe that women, as the current gatekeepers of reproduction possess all of the necessary inherent biological instincts to select the best possible genetic specimens of human beings, and that left to their own devices, women will select for the best genetic traits in men. Best being defined as those traits that will ensure the perpetuation and advancement of humanity. Now, this doesn't hold up to scrutiny when we take notice of the trend for large amounts of women to sexually select for traits that simply are not conducive to a technologically advanced society, we will often see the hardworking engineer cuckolded and tricked into raising the offspring of men with violent tendencies, and in the urban matriarchal setting specifically, the human female seems to select for the most criminally inclined men possible. Many women would seem to prefer to utilize technically proficient men for their utility, while choosing to perpetuate the species with a completely different type of man while at the same time dumping the financial responsibility for these children when these men eventually jump ship on the state and the everyman, which tells me that women are still selecting for genetic material that benefited our species millennia ago, instead of what it would benefit us now and in the future. Uh, the brute may have protected a village thousands of years ago, but today, uh, small, unassuming scientists have developed weapons that can incinerate whole cities, Brawn is not the way of the world anymore, and it likely never will be again. Now, nobody's saying that women shouldn't retain their genetic preferences, uh, or that we should outlaw heterosexual procreation. Uh, that's preposterous. But the artificial womb would, in fact, offer an influx of new, untested genetic material into the human gene pool that might not ever have made it if women are left to be the only arbiters of what constitutes genetic superiority for our species forever and ever. This belief that women are the most efficient litmus test for which genes will benefit the species is unfounded. Uh, we have people like Leonardo da Vinci, never married, never had children. Uh, not only that, but he was quite possibly gay, and as such wasn't even interested in reproduction of women. Uh, Newton died a virgin, is speculated to have been asexual, and openly spoke about how women were a distraction to scientific endeavor. Tesla expressed similar sentiments. Uh, these represent some of the greatest minds the human race has ever produced. These men might not have even wanted anything to do with women at all. Uh, but had these titans lived in our time, and they were offered a chance through artificial reproduction to preserve their genetics through a completely scientific process, we could very well have conserved some of the most greatest and profound genetic anomalies to ever exist. We could theoretically mass produce the types of genetics that only come around every few centuries and only stick around for 60 or 70 years leaving massive technological developments in their wake. Now, these men were far from the charismatic strutting peacocks that women swoon over, yet in terms of what they've done for humanity, well, uh, that very well may be immeasurable and lost to us forever uh, due to the inefficiency on relying solely on the lust of women to direct our genetic posterity. Now, another factor, uh, anyone seriously considering the merits of an art artificial womb, 
uh, would have to be the fact that it provides us with a means to bypass the speed limit of reproduction. Planet Earth is of course home to a robust human population of 7 billion people, but a population this size took millennia to build and had to abide by the parameters of the majority of mothers, taking 9 months to produce in the vast majority of cases only one child. Meaning, granted the odd case of twins or triplets, uh, there was a very real speed limit on the rate at which human beings could proliferate. So our population on this planet is robust now, but if, God forbid, human beings ever found themselves on the brink of extinction, uh, the artificial womb would provide us with the ability to repopulate exponentially faster. Now, in creating the artificial womb, we will have had created a potent redundancy against human extinction. In the distant future, or maybe in the not-so-distant future, we will achieve the status of being a spacefaring species. And in doing so, we will absolutely need the means to be able to populate planets at a faster rate than with natural reproduction. When we become sufficiently advanced so that we can embark upon multi-generational excursions into deep space, the artificial womb would of course replenish crew. I mean, the applications are literally boundless. So with that said, to rocking Mr. E, uh, considering that you've already advocated in your video to ban IVF and sperm donation on top of banning the artificial womb, and I'm not kidding about that, eight minutes into his uh, Rise of Totalitarianism video, he actually said that these things should be banned immediately after advocating for the complete removal of the state from the free market, uh, which contradicts itself considering that artificial womb services would certainly exist within that market. But given the possible applications of such a technology, are you prepared, Rocking Mystery, uh, to advocate to make such a technology illegal since you've called for banning it? And on the basis of a conspiracy theory, and that's exactly what it is, based on fictional dystopian novels about a technology that hasn't even arrived yet, are you taking a page out of the playbook of the Marxists you claim to resist in labeling an inanimate technology inherently evil, uh, such as to say that we should have never invented guns because millions and millions of people have been killed by them since their invention? Should the basis for developing technologies rest on fear mongers that want to suppress scientific development because they have made the unilateral judgment that it should not be pursued? I say absolutely not. Now, uh, in regards to the issue that Rocky Mystery has raised about the nuclear family uh, being the most stable arrangement for a healthy civilization, uh, I'm also going to take issue with that and debunk it thoroughly but that will come in a later video. As for now, this is all I have to say.